What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to look at PyScript for Python on a web browser. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at PyScript, but before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books, runtime fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said in this video, we're going to look at PyScript, which is a really, really cool new project that allows you to run Python right on a web page, like client side, right on an actual web page. And there's lots of different ways you can use Python on a web page, hooking it into a framework like Django or Flask or something like that. But you need one of those frameworks in order to do it. And even then, you don't get complete Python on a web page. You get to use their version of some sort of scripting language that allows you to use a little bit of Python, sort of like Jinja, right? With this project, you can use actual Python straight on a web page. You don't need anything on the back end, no back end web framework at all. You could just use Python on a web page. It's amazing. So right off the bat, let me just tell you, this is a pretty new thing and it's not very good yet, right? It's it's okay, but it, it's clunky. It doesn't quite work. There's lots of errors. So this is very early days for this and they're working on it. This is from Anaconda. If you guys have used that before, these are you know heavy hitters. They're gonna get this all figured out and worked out eventually. But right now this is pretty rough. So we can kind of play around with it. We can kind of watch it and see how well it's developed, but you definitely can't use this in like production right now. And I'll show you exactly why in just a second. So this is the website, pyscript.net, if you want to come over here and check it out. And there's two different ways to use it, but not really. As of this morning, there's only one way to use it. So I'll tell you about that in just a second. So what we want to do is just copy this bit of code onto a web page, and then you can just start using this thing. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the sublime text editor, and I've just got a file. I'm calling it index.html, and I saved it into a directory called PYS, short for PyScript. It doesn't matter. Save it anywhere you want on your computer, right? So this is just a basic HTML starter thing, right? We've got an HTML document. We've got a head. We've got a title. Uh, we need a closing head tag here, it looks like. There we go. Now we just need to paste in those two lines of code that we got from that screen. And you'll notice this is pointing to a style sheet on their website and also a JavaScript file on their website. So that's all you need to start using this. So let's play around with this. To use Python on this page, now all we have to do is actually we need a body tag as well. Basic HTML. It's been a while, right? So to use Python on your page, you just need the py-script tag. And like all HTML, we need an opening and a closing tag. Now inside of these tags, you can do any Python you want. So we could just go print, hello world, whatever. Go ahead and save this. And then just head over to a web browser and open that file. You can see I've got it right here. If we hit this, you can see it sort of loads the runtime and that we get an error. And right off the bat, you can see uh, this doesn't quite work that great. So you gotta play with this. You gotta reload it a couple of times. I don't know. Sometimes that works. Sometimes if you come up here and just sort of run it like that, nope, nope, that's no good. Hit shift reload, maybe that'll do it. And then finally, boom, it does work. And we see hello world, right? So that's the problem with this. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And you might be thinking, well, okay, we're using it from their sort of CDN. Maybe there's some lag time or something. Maybe if we installed it on our own computer, we wouldn't have that problem. Ah, well, if you head back over to the website, you can see there is in fact, two different ways to do this. You can download it or you can install it. So you can come down here and you can download this, right? And this gives you a zip file that you can then unzip. And then you add these two lines of code, which are basically the same lines, but they're pointing to pyscript.css and pyscript.js that assumably you would have just downloaded and installed right here. The problem is if we pull this up, I did that, I installed it, I unzipped it and here it is. You can see these are the files, right? There is no CSS file and there is no JavaScript file. Well, maybe it's in one of these directories. Nope, it's not in here. Maybe it's in SRC. Nope, nothing there. Maybe it's in components. Nope, nothing there. Uh, if we go to public, nope, that's just a git, dot, dot git keep file. If we go to examples, I don't know, maybe there's something in here, but not really. I still don't see any JSS or any JS files or any CSS files at all. So the thing you need in order to use this, if you download it, isn't even in this package. So 
like I said, this is very new. If you come down here, it says, please be advised that PyScript is very alpha and under heavy development. There are many known issues from usability to loading times, and you should expect things to change often. We encourage people to play and explore with PyScript, but at this time, we do not recommend using it for production. So keep that in mind. That being said, this is still freaking awesome, right? This is great. Doesn't work that great, but they're gonna get the bugs worked out and we can start using Python right on a web page with no backend framework. So let's play around with this a little bit, see if we can get it to work some. You know, you could do anything up here. We can create, you know, my underscore num, set it equal to 41, turn this into an F string, come back over here, you know, type in my underscore num, save this and this should work. And I should mention very quickly, if you're not super strong in Python right now, but you would like to be, check out my new book, Intro to Python Programming. You can see we've got the paperback or the hardcover or also the Kindle version at Amazon. I'll also put a link in the description of this video if you want the PDF version for nine bucks. And I think it's like 27 for the paperback and 30 something for the hardback and I don't know, 15 for the Kindle, I don't know, whatever it is, check it out on Amazon. But if you want the PDF version, you can get it for nine bucks with the link in the description. When you buy the book, you also get a free membership to codemy.com that has access to my Python Programming for Everyone course which is a bunch of videos that cover most of the stuff that's in this book. So if you want it in video form, you can follow along on the website or you could just use the book, whichever you prefer. But check that out if your Python skills need a little work. Uh, <laughs> but if you're watching this, you probably already have decent Python skills. So if we go ahead and save this, head back over here, run this guy again. It says, hello world 41, right? So boom, we're using Python. So, I mean, we could do all kinds of stuff here. I mean, we could do actual stuff. So I don't know, let's create a list and say, John, Tina, Steve, and Mary, All right? So we've got a Python list. We can come down here and, you know, do for loops or something, you know, for name in names, you know, print name, whatever. Save this, come back over here, hit reload. And we get an error. And uh oh, we get an actual error. So. Uh, line five, we messed up, right? So very cool. It, even when you mess up, we have name here. That should be name. So if we go ahead and save this, head back over here, hit reload. Now, boom, John, Tina, Steve, and Mary are all printed one at a time on each line as we would expect. So we could do logic, right? We could go uh, if names, I don't know, the zeroth name equals John, then we can print, let's do an F string. Hello, John, else we could print, and let's also do an F string, hello, whoever the name is, names zero, All right? Go ahead and save this. It's a little weird because we don't get any color changes as if this were Python, because this is an HTML file in Sublime, so that's a little off-putting, but eh, whatever. Hit reload, and we see there it says, hello, John. If we come back over here, change this to Tim. Now this is no longer true, so it should print out hello Tim. If we save this, head back over here, hit reload. It says hello Tim, and you didn't see it that time because I edited it out, but I had to hit reload like 15 times to get it to work this time. So it's very clunky, right? But still very, very exciting because when they get this sorted out, I mean, this is gonna be awesome. Just running Python straight from a web page, no backend framework that you have to load at all. That's gonna be awesome. Like, what are we gonna be able to do with that? All kinds of crazy cool stuff and uh, very cool. So check it out, PyScript.net. There's some documentation. If you click here, you can click here on how to use PyScript. This goes to GitHub. It's, it's github.com slash PyScript slash PyScript slash blob slash main slash getting dash started, all capitals. But you can check that out. There's all kinds of examples in there that you can play around with right in there. But also if you download it, like I did earlier, like I showed you here, you go into the PyScript's example folder and there's all kinds of different examples you can play around with. So, you know, oh, there's a JS file right there. Uh, still no PyScript.js file though. So weird, right? <laughs> Whatever. Uh, but uh, keep an eye on this. This is very cool. And uh, yeah, I'll report back as soon as they get this ironed out a little better, as soon as it starts to work a little bit better and we'll start to actually use it and I'll do a bunch of videos on all the cool stuff we could do with it. But until then, we're just gonna sort of keep an eye on it 
and that's fun. So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Konami.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. That's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Kodumi.com, and I'll see you in the next video.